This time on Graveyard Cars, we're wrapping up the 340 Cuda, installing the panels and doors on the 70 Hemi Charger. Mark trains Alyssa on assembly line markings, and there's a special surprise in store for the ghouls. Coming up on this episode of Graveyard Cars. Things have really been rocking at the new shop. I personally laid out a beautiful paint job on the 1970 Hemi Charger in FK5 Burn Orange. Auto Metal directed a beautiful job installing all the new sheet metal on our Phantom Cuda. We finished the 1970 383 Cuda and Mark and Elena Daly could not be happier. With my daughter Alyssa, my old buddy Will, and the newest ghoul to the team Dave, we have been turning and burning like never before. So I had the guys working on this a little earlier, trying to do some of the edges and stuff so we could primer it tonight. Have you looked it over? No, not yet. Mm. I'm just getting the mask already right feeling now. stuff I don't like. Feeling stuff I don't like. Right now we're working on a 1971 Plymouth Barracuda. This little car started life with a 318 and an automatic. The owner wanted a 446 barrel car, so he has commissioned us to build him a tribute 1971 Cuda 446 barrel four speed in Winchester Gray. And it's great having Will back. Uh, he brings a lot of skill sets to graveyard cars that we need. He's got a great work ethic. Uh, he does a phenomenal job. I have basically forgiven him for stabbing me in the back. It was in my heart to forgive him for that. And so I think that right now we're looking forward to a real good future together, working uh, side by side and pumping out some of these cars. Really came back. It's like the prodigal son. Oh man. I don't know if I'd go that far. I told him he left. I said you'll be back. You know what I'm saying? He'll be back. He's back. Pretty sure you didn't say that. I'm sorry? I'm pretty sure you didn't say that. I didn't say he'd be back? I don't think so. And while he's working over there, I don't want to say anything he can hear, but you know, when a guy comes kind of not crawling back, but um What's that? No, I didn't come crawling back on my hands and knees. Mark called me, needed a good painter to come work for him, and I came back. Did you get the inside of the headlight door on that side? No, no, I'm still trying to get it passed up. Oh, okay. It's weird because you started whispering. So we have a lot of banter. He, he's basically mini-me. He's kind of a heavier version of me, you know, but he's a mini-me. So everything, all the humor and the comedy and the things that I snap, he can snap right back. So we have a lot of fun. Thing. It's, uh, <clears throat> yeah. How do you tell a friend no? Why are you whispering, boss? Uh, talking to this guy right here, I'm talking to him about having to sand this right here and how important it is. Because if you don't, didn't I just say that? <laughs> so. so anyway, um, it's cool because uh, me and Will go back a long ways. 1997. 97. Holy cow. Wow. I know. I'm almost 40. And you just graduated when you started working for me, yeah. right? God. So you were 20. They held them back a couple of years. They did not. While Will is finishing the block work on the 71 Barracuda Tribute car, uh, I'm gonna go up front and check in. I understand that all the appliances are here now from our friends at One Fat Frog. This is so cool. The main idea behind having all the appliances and having the ability to cook here and to be able to have the theater here, it's so hard to get all the guys together to film. I mean, we're burning, burning, burning on getting cars done. What happens is it's a Saturday, we're filming, noon comes around, everybody's hungry. This guy goes to this restaurant, this guy goes to that restaurant. Three or four hours later, we've lost half of an afternoon. I think it's good for morale, I think it's good for productivity, and I think it's just a really cool thing to be able to add to the graveyard car experience. I'm in a good mood don't mean I can't knock a lung loose. Will is all finished doing the block work uh, on the 71 Barracuda. It's time for another coat of epoxy primer. So this is time right now for the master to go in and teach the uh, grasshopper exactly how it's done. All right, so if you'll mix up the primer, I'll go get the mask. I just bought us two new masks. Well, inside the paint booth, um, I give hand signals, all right? So that's what that's about. When you when you see me doing this or, or this or this, uh, I'm giving hand signals like the wooden uh, top jet fighters when they can't use communication because they don't want the enemy to overhear it because they're eavesdropping on their conversation. So they'll go like that means go up or, or you know, like when they're bringing them in, they'll go like that. So I'm saying bring it home, bring it home. 
So basically all of my hand gestures have uh, a meaning behind them and and he, he'll learn those. It probably looks like I'm a little bit different out there when I'm doing that, but I think he'll learn some of the different uh, hand signals and, and find that they're very useful. The hand signals, this is field goal, this is safe. They mean nothing. So whatever he's doing with the whole, hey, they mean, you know, the, this is a rooster. You know, you put your hand, that's a rooster. You know, so really, I mean, I mean, that's it. That's that's what it is. It's it's a it's a life spent learning how to do something, and you take it very seriously. All right. So, hand signals might seem goofy to you, but to the guy that's receiving them or the guy that's giving them, it might save a life. Or in this case, a paint job. So. Danger zone. <laughs> Oh, good. Nice. Look at there. You just kind of want to go through and make sure. Structurally sound? Yeah. Now that the epoxy work is done and it's curing in the booth, I want to be able to take our parts guy out and show him what's salvageable and what's not salvageable about donor seats. Royal used to do upholstery, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. He's like Forrest Gump. Yep. He used to do everything. He love everything. He hung out with the president. He played ping, ping pong. pong. Yeah. yeah. Rotten through. And bugs. Oh, yeah, look at that. Potato yeah. bugs. Potato, potato bugs. But this ain't all the way through. There's no way to save that. Go throw that in the dumpster. This is a really good experience for Nick. Uh, he wants to be our parts guy, and he's really put a great foot forward towards it. Knowing what's good and how to tell if it's good, how much integrity has to be left in the metal, when is a seat track garbage, and when can it be rebuilt? These are key things that any good restoration technician has to know. Therefore, any good parts guy also has to know. Pull this release, which is the same as pulling this lever if you were sitting in the car. That's the relay rod. Mm -hmm. Just pull it, tap it back out of the way. Pop this off. And, there, just and there are your tracks right there, OK? That's just grease. So now you're down to the seat for me. You can already tell it's not crusty if you look at this. It's been reupholstered, obviously. They didn't have velour back then. But look, you can still see the nice black paint on it. So why don't you go through there and cut all your hog rings. Nick has a really good idea now as to what's gonna be salvageable and what's not. So I'm gonna cut him loose to do the rest of the disassembly. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go get together with the rest of the team, go over our progress board, and get the week lined out. This is gonna cost somebody a dissension. Yeah, I don't know who drew those. Yeah, I think I do. That was me. We actually have a pretty busy week this week. The 426 Hemi engine and transmission, the rear axle assembly are all ready to go in the charger. I want to get those installed. There's a little bit of detailing that needs to be done. Once that's done, I also want to work with Royal on buttoning up the back end of the CUDA, their 340 CUDA, because time is starting to run out on that project and we need to get it done. If everybody pulls together, does a really good job, I've got a very cool, unique, I think special treat that folks are going to really, really like. This incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. Okay guys, so this week we're working on our 70 Hemi Charger and our 1970 CUDA 340 automatic rear window louver car. I want to get the sheet metal put on, that's the doors, the fenders, the hood, okay? Once that's done, I want to raise it up in the air and get the drivetrain installed. That's the motor, the transmission, the K-member, the rear axle assembly. Before we do the drivetrain, Alyssa, you need to put all the markings on. So I'm going to work with you on the finer points of detail, all right? I'm going to work with Alyssa on the installation of all the assembly line markings and the original part numbers. I think she's going to do really well at that. Meanwhile, the rest of us can start putting the rest of the sheet metal on the car. So by the end of the week, I want that on. I want the drivetrain in it, and I want all the sheet metal on it. Uh, Bob's little 1970 CUDA 340 rear window louver car. I want to get all the rest of the back end of that wrapped up so that we can move it forward towards getting it done in the next two weeks. We still got our little 340 CUDA over here that we're running a little bit out of time on. I think we're okay, but I still, we got to keep pressing forward. Just because we have something over here doesn't mean we don't have something over here or over there. So uh, between everything, I think uh, we're going to have a really good week. So we're going to run out of time soon on it. Feels like we're doing really good because we're knocking out a lot of hardware, but tomorrow's going to be here before you know it. So let's rock and roll. You take those two seats up and put them somewhere in his parts room so we have that bench to work off. I want to get all of the bolts set out for the fenders and the doors for this car so we can get the sheet metal. So you want that whole thing cleared off? I want the whole thing cleared off 
unless it says Hemi Charger. Okay. We're working on the balance that Mark and I started yesterday, and nothing's lining up. Bro, well, you need a toupee, I decided, buddy. No, I'm fine. I'm, nah, I'm sick of your bald head, no, man. No, I'm fine. I'm tired of it. Well, you need a toupee, and that's what I'm going to buy you for your birthday, bud. A good look. I just watched any, Seinfeld work. Costanza got it, one. You look good in it. You want. Elaine hated it. See, this back's not lining up. Okay, you want to stop screaming for a minute? I think we had the wrong hardware in there. Mm -hmm. I think these are okay that we did, but I think these are too big. Look at the factory size of the stud. See, that'll allow us, I think, more latitude. Gosh, those are so small. Nice. That will allow for more adjustment. It will. Yeah. Where do you want the 70 charger parts? They can just be out. This they, will all be here then? Yeah. We're okay. looking. What I'm going to be looking for is the hardware that holds the doors right and the fenders on. So you're going to need to get things out. OK. And we're going to need door latches too. OK. You're up. You're button up against it right there. This doesn't go anywhere. That should move over a little bit. Uh-uh. It fits the That's whole perfectly. I mean, it does there, already. not when you move it over. The thing about the Valance is the body men should always take the time to pre-fit them. In this case, they didn't take the time to pre-fit them, so it means extra work for us to be able to get the style lines on both sides to line up, along with lining up with the center bracket and the rear body panel. We'll get there. It just takes a little bit of extra time if the pre-fit isn't done. Mark thought these were the right ones first, but as it turns out, they were wrong. These were for the valance clips, and Mark was guessing that these were right, and they're not for this car. They're right for some of the B bodies, but the E bodies use the smaller one and the smaller clip. That way, it gives you a little bit more adjustment in the balance. Yeah, I did have the wrong diameter of stud, but at least I knew that it took a stud, OK? He would have been putting bolts in there. He'd been wrenching it like crazy, trying to get into this no access area. And Royal's just looking for any chance that he can be the man. Once you get the rhythm. Get her going there, Come you know. On, get rhythm. You got none, buddy. Huh? I got more rhythm than you do. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. Bro, you haven't got any rhythm, bud. I'm sorry. I, I see chattering your teeth and tapping your foot to the ground nervously is not rhythm, bud. Rhythm, you see me dance. Okay, that's rhythm. <laughs> We've all seen you dance. It looks like a spasm. While Royal and I are working on the 7340 Cuda rear valance, I've got Will out looking for the correct hinges that were pre-fit already for the doors for the 70 Hemi Charger. Will has been doing an outstanding job. He's a team player. He's working his butt off to make this work, and I'm very proud of him. No hinge. No hinge. There's two boxes over there. Damn it. Um, but not, not a hinge. OK. This is exactly the way you don't want to start a week. Missing a door hinge, missing a bolt, because today it's just those two little things. Tomorrow, we somebody will have misplaced the engine out of the Challenger. Um, let's go for a walk. Which years of the Plymouth Roadrunner came standard with wheel opening moldings? 1971 to 1973, 1972 to 1974, 1971 to 1974. The answer coming up after the break. This incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. So which year of the Plymouth Roadrunner were the wheel opening molding standard equipment? The answer is C, the 1971 to 1974 Coke bottle style Plymouth Roadrunner. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. And this is the only one that you have? Yes, sir. And I went through the two boxes that are underneath the Dave's bench. All right, let's go see if we can find one. I think I saw another one of these upstairs. But the parts room, once again, has saved the day. Being organized, having everything in place, now we can get back to working on the car, get the doors installed, get the fenders installed, and get the hood ready. Yeah, that's it. Oh, sweet. Yep. Left and a right. Look at that. These hinges can go a multitude of ways, so I'm just sending Will out back, look at a 68 to 70, and see exactly how they went on from the factory. There's a chance, there's always a 50-50 chance I'll put it on the wrong side. I just want it to look exactly the way it did at the factory. The rollers and the little check bar go down on the left-hand side, and they go up on the right-hand side. When you're actually out there putting them on the cars, you say, OK, which way was it? Was it upside down, or is it right side up? Are those still pretty accessible with the dash in? No. You don't set these now, you're screwed. You know, Will brings up a good point. You can put something together and it'll work, but if it's not correct, in many cases, you'd have to go back and take half a car apart to be able to get access to them. So taking your time and making sure that it's right the first time will save you time down the road. And you said the driver's side went down? The passenger side goes down. The passenger side goes down. Yes. 
Just to be sure, you wanna put those in? And I'll run out and take a quick look. They're on the bottom. He's crazy, he just walked out and looked at one. They're on the bottom, like I said. That's what I said. Screw you. I said they're on the bottom. What the name of Rewind it, I said it was. You said the driver's side went down. The passenger side goes down. The passenger side goes down. Oh, you're insane. <laughs> Can we go? No, there is no dude. That's messed up. Man. No, I know it went on the bottom. Hand me the other one, the other lower hinge. All right, let's try to hang the door and see what we got. Bro, you give us a hand with this door real quick, bud. It's in the open position, so it should be coming out about like that. Putting a car together that has uh, one of the most angelic paint jobs, like my 70 Charger Burn Orange car, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna put a chip or a scratch or a nick or anything else in, in these things. Taking your time, again, doing it right, being cautious, being aware, that's the important thing. It's okay. Careful, careful. You took your thumb out. That looks awesome. I love that color. You're gonna move it straight back, right? I just need to loosen them up so it can go straight back, yeah. Is there that much play in that yeah. in that pin? I'm not laughing, it's royal. Laura loves what? <laughs> God. <laughs> Hey, hey, you're wrecking <laughs> animal! Settle the <laughs> down! Don't push it open, you'll keep it. Go get that blue rat. You'll chip it. <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy rager. With the sheet metal on the Dodge Charger now and the rear valance all buttoned up and fitting like it's supposed to, I'm gonna go over to the body shop with Will and I'm gonna start blocking out the deck lid for the 70 Dodge Charger. Let's put some foo foo on there. Some what? Foo foo, some, uh, some blocking powder, sorry. Foo foo? Blocking powder. Blocking Guide powder. Cut? Nice hair today, huh? What's wrong with my hair? Looks like a little kid that wakes up on Saturday morning to watch cartoons. Yeah, pretty much. Will did good. He's been painting for me for a while now. He's doing an awesome job, but I want him to be exactly like me, the best in the world. Without the arrogance. Well, I don't know about it. So do you want the 150 or 200? So why is it when I point out the fact it's arrogant? I need a 150, please. Because you shouldn't have to tell the people that are watching. The, so people, that are wa the people that are watching should already know you're that good. So we're going to go ahead and waste, because there's there's body men right now all over the world are starving gonna, that would love to have that little piece of... Are you gonna send them that piece? Well, it's cutting down nice out here. It's not cutting down so nice in there. But it's, you can see it tapering out here. The, the puddle is right there, yeah. If you press too hard, you'll push right down in there and pull that guide coat up out of there. Well, there's another layer of primer, but just so maddening. First eyewitness accounts of this grisly development came from people who were understandably frightened. Because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens, this station will remain on the air day and night. Day and night. See that? Just low as hell in there. Okay, get me blown off there. Uh, I'm gonna mix up a little bit of glaze to put on there. I hate Mopar deck lids. I don't care if it's Cuda Challenger, Charger, Ruiner, or GTX. I don't care. They're a b to do. This particular one is really flat, but has a low spot. So I'm gonna go over and mix up a little bit of plastic filler with some polyester, catalyze it, put it on the deck lid so that I can sand it down, and then we can reprime that area and be able to block that thing out to perfection. Look at it. You can see it sunk right into the hole. I'm not sure the exact reason behind these deck lids being so possessed. I don't know if it's because there's not much in the way of reinforcement between the inner structure and the outer. If they stretch over the years, if they've been popped before and we just don't know it. I don't know what contributes to it. It's, it is a phenomenon. We want to feel a high spot there, not a low spot. Now look at the, yeah, I look at how it. it fell into it. That's how deep that was right through there. And we're just gonna barely let the block touch that mud. 
See how that starts to feather back that there? Very nice. That feather's nice, but you mm -hmm. can still tell you got too much material in here. So we're gonna go to a fresh piece of 80 because we want the sandpaper to do the work, not muscle. And that's easy for you. <laughs> Sorry. Now feel that. Now go over the top of the center of it. It's as perfect as you're gonna get to feather into the old body work. That's where you're gonna get and the rest you're gonna bridge. I'm calling it right there. Uh, go ahead and blow that off. I'll put a little bit more on that end down there. Blow it that way so we can blow the shop out that direction. That was the plan. I know it was, Willie. Willie came crawling back to me a few weeks ago. <laughs> Kinda cool. I just got the word that the transport guy showed up and it's got my two new e-bodies coming to Graveyard Cars. Uh, one is a 70 Cuda 440, the other one is a 1970 Barracuda Grand Coupe. The 1970 Cuda with a 440 in it, that's a very unusual engine option. Most 70 e-bodies are 446 barrels or 446 packs. The other car is a 1970 Plymouth Barracuda Grand Coupe 318 four-speed. A couple of really neat cars coming in and I'm just blessed that we have as much uh, work as we do. See, this is a golden opportunity for Will. A young guy didn't get to work around this stuff much when he was, you know, a kid. I mean, these cars were off the streets. What do you think, Will? We're ready. This is it, man. This is what you dreamed about your whole life. A good portion of your life? Well, you're 12. How long can you dream? Oh, this ought to just whip right into my skull. <laughs> Can you grab the Stringo, grab under the back, and let's put it next to the Hemi Cuda? You don't hear that in every parking lot in America, do you? Put it next to the white Hemi Cuda. Here we go. Piece of cake. You could have got a 383 and a four speed with air, by the way. Oh, you could? You couldn't get it in the 440, the 426, I mean the 446. I still back. think it's a. You should uh, be learning I know, this. Stuff. I know, but you, you shouldn't be exhausted by it. The second you get all crazy with everything. Why is rattling you, off a series of VIN numbers? It's being ridiculous. Well, I'll make sure I stop the next uh, cardiothoracic neurosurgeon when he's rattling off to the nurse what he'd like to have in the way of you're, you're, utensils you to do surgery. Yeah, it's no, exactly like it. It's nothing like it. Okay. Sorry, I know my stuff. I apologize. There's nothing about, no reason to apologize. Would you prefer I just said the yellow car? First eyewitness accounts of this grisly development came from people who were understandably frightened. They're coming to get you, Barbara. So we're gonna start over here with the transmission. Okay. These are the details, some of my markings we were talking about. Going over the finer points of detail, I call it, when it comes to putting these cars together, uh, the assembly line used paint daubs and markings to be able to let the guys down the way know what was done on a particular car. This is fascinating stuff. I find it's fascinating. If she does, and she takes this under her wing and she really enjoys what she's doing, I'll be able to step back, move over to another section of the shop, and turn that over to her. So I hope that she's as excited about learning it as I am about teaching it to her. These are the things, the history of the car, the, the finer points of detail, and we'll call it, that's going to be your job. Why did they do these? Is it just to mark they're that they got done? Or? Mm -hmm. They're like the transmission's been bolted down, the fluids are filled, the, the shift rod's been adjusted. These are all markings for the final inspector at the end of the assembly line. All these alphanumeric codes that you see, they correspond to markings on the engine and the transmission. So these markings are going to be different on every car? Yeah, if we were doing just... the 70 Cuda, it's going to have an 8 and 3 quarter rear end, it's got an automatic transmission. Those markings are a lot different teaching the fruit of my loin how to follow in my footsteps, my seed. I'd like to be not referred to as those things, please. Good enough. Daughter. So why don't we work on, looks like to me like the X is going, gonna go on after the numbers go on. Now here he's got it in two places. This is usually where I see it, right through here. Okay. So I don't know why this has two unless this is an example of somebody just going back. <laughs> see these numbers? These are the size and the font. So what you'll see right here is I have those same numbers. Okay. How do you know what numbers to put on that transmission? The book. Okay. Well, let me just take a that. quick guess. Is it a six, seven, eight? 
Six, seven, eight would be a real nice 23. <laughs> 23 spline. But it's body. a combination of these. It is a combination yeah. of those. So you have to go to the broadcast sheet. And what we're looking for are assemblies. Not particular part numbers, but assembly numbers. Transmission 676. There's your numbers. 676. 676. Okay. There's a six. Seven. And we'll go back over and do the six. And there you go. So there's our part numbers, last three digits of our part numbers. So, so why don't you take this, and I want you to swipe this across the numbers like we saw. Across the VIN? The uh, not the VIN, the, the casting number. The it's casting. across the casting number. It's a pretty color. So this white daub of paint right here is, on the top. put me one right on top of this bolt head, and then all the way to here. So this covers the top of the bolt, the top of the washer, and into that area right there. Yep, beautiful. And then we got a white daub between the one and two bolts on the transmission. So we got a white daub right here. So wait a minute, this is backwards in the book, right? Because that's self, I'm just trying to figure out how you're getting from the diaphragm to that, because we're looking at it from the opposite side. So I was confused. Alyssa's a bright girl. I mean, obviously, you know, look where she's coming from. But I think she doesn't pay attention, and then she plays catch up. So when we're looking at the driver's side of an engine transmission, we know the shift linkage is on that side. And we go to the book, but the book's just located on the passenger side of the car. And she says, I don't see it on this side of the engine. Well, of course not. You just pick up the book and walk around 180 degrees. It's right there. When you're looking at, like, here with the shift rods, see all these shift rods? You don't see them over here. So that's a clue they're not over here. Yeah, now, giant this one. This is what this is all about. Oh it's not a chance God. for me you're to make fun of You're the worst trainer. Can I, like, have someone else train me next time? Is Royal available? I have been. To yeah. <laughs> is Royal available? <laughs> so we have one more white daub. Does this help a little bit? Because now yeah. you can see the Oh, my God. It matches at, the picture. Yeah, exactly. I'm learning. I threw you weird. a curveball by being on the other side. I weird. apologize. I know. It's so weird. You're doing a good job. I'm sorry I'm not a good teacher. You just need to have more patience. Maybe I wasn't a very good father. There's no such thing as a stupid question. I, about I've that? always had a problem with that. You didn't have very many friends in school, huh? Mm -mm. Most of them beat me up. Wonder why. Such a likable person. Okay, not, not on my floor. It's a $250,000 floor. Oh my It'll God. It'll clean up. Oh my God. <laughs> You're so dramatic. You put a lot of energy on things that don't matter, Dad. This is a polished floor. They cut it down with 40 grit, and then they polished it out with 80, and then they went to 123, 60, 400, 1,000, 2,000, and then they buffed it with a 480-volt machine so that it shines like, like glass, and you just throw paint on it like a crazy person, like, like, a, like a, a sociopath burning down a house. Really? I'm a sociopath now? Let's worry about the rear end now. OK. You know, other people doing this for the first time are going to feel the exact same way I do. I know it. I know it. But you're my daughter, and I expect perfection out of you. Just like you hold me to a higher standard of perfection. Only because all the smack you talk. Let's do the 084 right here. Schlop it. OK, there's a schlop right in there on that inside of that. No, no, oh, dear God. White, Wait, just... why have you gone crazy? I didn't mean with the yellow, I meant with the white. Why... Was I, I supposed to know that? Oh. Mama, <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, I thought so I, I went a little crazy. Yeah. Nice job. Give it up. Sweet. Uh, Alyssa did a phenomenal job. This is her first time out of the gate, and it's very overwhelming. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of markings. There's a lot of little intricate details. With all the assembly line markings now in place and correct for our 70 Hemi Charger, we can get them installed. We can bolt in the K-member with the engine transmission bell housing in place as well as the rear differential, button up the bottom side of it. And if that goes well and we get that done, no damage, and I don't end up killing anybody, I have got a really cool surprise for the guys. True or false, the 1968 to 1970 Plymouth Roadrunners were not available with wheel opening moldings, not standard or as an option. The answer coming up after the break. This incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. So, true or false, the 1968 to 70 Plymouth Roadrunners were not available with wheel opening moldings. The answer is true. Oddly enough, you could not order an RM package, any Roadrunner, 68 to 70, hardtop, post, or convertible with wheel opening moldings. 
However, in a twist of irony, in 1971 to 1974, they were standard equipment. Because of the because obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens, this station, station will station remain will on, the on the air day and night. Day and night. Okay guys, so what I want to do is get the rear end put in the car first, because remember the counterbalance thing? That thing weighs over a thousand pounds right there, so if we put it in the front and we don't have something in the back to counterbalance it, that thing's gonna to want to do the endo. So um, I've got everything set up on it. It should go in really easy. Okay, Will, I'm gonna let you do some of this because you haven't done too many of the mechanical things. See how easy this goes together. Me and Royal, the old salty dogs. The 426 Hemi is an elephant, not by nickname, but by reality. You compare it to an engine that has more cubic inches, like a 440, and it dwarfs the 440 because of the massive Hemi heads. Now you have to take this 426 Hemi with this manifolds, with the heads, with all of this stuff, and fit it into the same engine compartment that would accept the 440, or a 318 for that matter. What's the X mean on the burn? It's an assembly line marking, and I don't know if it meant that all the bolts were torqued down or if it had the fluid put in it. I don't know. Some guys know. I don't know. I thought you knew everything on these. I know it's supposed to be on there. <laughs> but you don't know why? Yeah, I didn't work on the assembly line in 1970. Why no, are you laughing you just, nervously, man? That's I'm not laughing nervously. You just said you're the greatest Mopar. Restoration technician the world's ever known, yeah. So I figured you yeah. would know everything. Yeah. Well, the second greatest Mopar restoration technician that the world's ever known doesn't even know it gets an X on there. Okay. Huh? I so, just figured you knew. I'm closer to levitating than I oh, am I falling. Too. I just yeah. I figured you knew. I guess not. Uh, I don't want to put wheels on because Alyssa's got to come back and we're going to do the rest of the detailing on everything once it's in. Okay. So like the leaf springs get a swab of white at the front. They also get a red to show that they're actually tightened down into place. Okay. This gets a two inch red band around it. Would you like to know how come? Yeah. yeah, because all styled wheels, wheels that you can see through, such as the 15.7 Rally, not the dog dish, but the 14.5 Road Wheel, all those that you can see through had to show red on the back of the drum. And yet you don't know why X is on the back of the drum. It is either because it's, it's full of... It's not huge, my man. It's huge. I just don't understand. This is the original, original, as your folks say, original. My folks? Yeah, this is the original pistol grip shifter out what of the car. What folks is that? That the owner's father drove for 30 years. Most people would have just put the new aftermarket one in. I sent this out, spent $300 having it perfectly re -chromed. Because I have what? Because a customer asked. Mm -hmm. Oh, a yeah, heart. Yeah, it ain't that big. This is the moment of truth. It's a tight fit. You put that engine in there, you do it without damaging anything, we win. You damage the aprons, you drop the engine back out, we take it over to the body shop and start back over. Okay, the fronts need, I don't know why you guys give up there. The front needs to come this way here. Okay, right, there, stop. Okay, we're just gonna put it in the car. Oh, we are? Not in the car, out in the parking lot. <laughs> oh, I wanna put it in this car. <laughs> And watch Will, he wants to push it into the traffic. No, I barely, there's no okay. traffic. Back the front's here. really straight, but the back needs to go over. <laughs> yep, I like it. Keep coming. So this Keep is where I think we need to come. come. We need to come farther with the yeah, motor we so we can get into the wider keep, part of the... second. Because... Okay, I understand. I don't, I don't want to... I actually think it gets narrower at the front, but... I think we're good there, Oil. Well, looks good over here, barely. Barely good over here. Yeah. That's crazy. Look at that thing fitting there. Oh, look at that. That's insane. Hold up. Does Hold it need to go back? The shorts. It needs to go back about an inch. About an inch. Is where and we'll be in. Okay. Uh, hold up. Hold it. There you go. Hang hold on it. a second, Mark. I gotta get this tape off. Okay. Go back up here. Oh. That's bad shit. Why did you go crazy? What the f are you talking I'm about? I'm talking about he wanted to go up just a little bit, and you, you know, that hey, big wait. old cement forearm of yours just went. <laughs> Gentle, it finesse. You ever play ping pong? What the? What the? No. What the? No, never. You ever play pool? Put a little bit of English on it. Be Sam. Be Sam. But because this, you're not gonna walk up to a pool table with with, with a cue and just start bashing balls like Bam Bam from Flintstones. I don't play pool. Uh, basically, everything went great. Uh, the Hemi engine's massive, so. Getting it edged just so slightly right in between the frame rails takes that many guys to do if you don't want to scratch everything up. Uh, but now everything's up into place. They're bolting down the rest of the K-member bolts. Um, all that's left is fasten all the things together that we've got uh, ready to go together in the suspension. We're ready to let it down, start putting the rest of the car together.
The guys did a phenomenal job over the last few weeks. I think they're going to like the reward that I brought for them. I know that I'm excited as can be. I think they're going to be equally as excited. Put guys, hand in your eye check it out. The thing is, <laughs> when you got light, nice little line right here. You have no idea how cool this is. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. First eyewitness accounts of this grisly development came from people who were understandably frightened. Guys, check it out. Come here. Thing is, warm light, nice little line right here. You have no idea how cool this is. What is it? Who is it? Another project. Just what we need is another project. <laughs> it runs. That's our That's our <laughs> right direct. That is cool. Oh yeah. Oh. Nice. Look at the chrome bumper. That is the car. Look at all the chrome on that. That is nice. Christine's up! <laughs> that car is sick. 1958 Plymouth Fury, 350 cubic inch, dual four. Killer car, literally. <laughs> That's awesome. Is that just an oh, awesome this car? Awesome. That is it sounds freaking awesome cool. and everything. It's scary. This is really exciting. Uh, for me, I've always loved the movie Christine, so to have the actual one of the cars that played a part in the movie come out uh, and detailed as well and as accurate as this one is, uh, it's just a blast. Uh, absolutely walking around on cloud nine. Look at the single backup light in the yeah. bumper. Yeah. yeah. Look at those fins. Go check, cool, the, aren't they? check the dude out, man. He is yeah. awesome. That yeah. guy is awesome. That's awesome. Hey, that is cool. Roll down your window. Check him out. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> yep, that's weird. Yep, there's nobody driving it. What? Yep, I don't want to for it. There's nobody in the car. Yeah. There's that's nobody weird. in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Driven by Satan! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's running this thing? Ella. The guy who owns this car, his name is Bill Gibson out of Florida, Pensacola, Florida. And uh, He's the guy that looks like he's got a big smile and a remote control in his hand. <laughs> That's the, the great Oz behind Sorry, the curtain Royal, right I, there. I know you're panning Royal, this there is for Bill. a minute. I saw the fear in your eyes. I, 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 could tell. I think that was awesome. awesome. It's the first time drive OK, them, Christine, so. go ahead, take a break. There we go. Thank That's you, girl. Awesome. Yeah. Bill Gibson, I'm, uh, this is my beautiful, lovely, significant other, Christine. Been in contact with Mark for a while, and Christine insisted that we had to come down and visit you guys at Graveyard Cars. Bill really went out of his way to make this happen. Um, this is one of those lifetime experiences that we'll always have at Graveyard Cars. It'll make it into one of our posters. It'll be in our, our kitchen or our lobby or one of the other areas that we hang out because this is part of the fabric of the life of Graveyard Cars. This is considered a classic car, but uh, it's everything a classic car should be and more. I mean, it's, it's red and white, which is the ultimate color. It's got awesome lines. It's got the fins, which is, you know, distinguishes that era and all the chrome. I mean, it's, yeah, it's cool. The tinted windows make it look so mean. The headlights flash in and it, it's, it's a cool car. I think Christine's really cool. I mean, how often do you get to uh, be this close to a real movie car? This is really cool to me because seeing this car is a 58 Plymouth and I had a 58 DeSoto, which is real similar. Just really big, round fendered, big fin, sexy car. Can I open this side? Uh, sure, go right ahead. Oh my gosh, can we sit in there? Sure, You're sure for it. Right? Just watch that seat. Why are you afraid to get in here? As long as you don't eat cheeseburgers, you're fine. see anybody driving. There you go. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> but when that seat started rolling forward, uh, the expression on his face was priceless. That was awesome. I need, huh? Oh, hey, oh, it's, it's on fire. It's on Is fire. Is it supposed to be smoking like that? <laughs> Can I get out and help him? F*** all y'all. <laughs> yeah, it's all fun and games till the 52-year-old high cholesterol guy talks. <laughs> I got, I got medical problems, man. I know everybody wants to make it like it's some funny thing that, that I actually freaked out when the seat started moving. I, I knew it was going to move. Of course you didn't. Show me under the hood. Now, oh, the sure. original Christine had a 350 cubic inch dual four. Is that what this That's is? That's correct. It does have that? And it does have this. Oh, it I thought for sure it was just a motor. I didn't oh, know you. It's a 318, 350 Golden Commander. Oh. One year big Holy block that did it. Holy crap. 
That is a Golden Commando motor. Oh, that is beautiful. The book originally came out with listing Christine as a Fury, a special order Fury, red and white. This is actually a Belvedere, which was one model below the Fury itself. I think in the book, Stephen King wanted to call it a Fury because of the name, so they made it look like a 58 Fury, but uh, 58 Fury only came in one color. Fury, of course, was a buckstone beige with a white top. There's a limited production of over 5,000 of them, so they were all painted the same. So in order to do this, you cannot order an actual Fury. So a lot of people who wanted the red and white combination would just step it down, order the Belvedere, order the Sport Tone Special, and all the little addition, the bumper wings were an added option. The 350 Golden Commando, which was a rare motor, actually Plymouth's first big block, uh, one-year motor. And uh, that could be ordered if you can get something like that. So they could sort of do those things, those options back then. To commemorate the visit of the world famous Christine, I decided that I would actually get the DVD on Blu-ray, set it up in our theater, and show it to the guys. Bill also had a surprise for us, and that was all of the stars of the movie actually signed the inside of the deck lid, so we got to see what everybody wrote. Don't eat in this car. I could miss that one. Yeah. I'm sure she'll be glad Can I drive to be ride her life. Yeah, we'll let you drive it. Uh, well, we'll have to ask her first. I but I, I don't think I, I don't know if I'd mind. sit in that seat again. <laughs> <laughs> It was great having the mayor out. I think that was awesome. It, it just shows that we're a little town and we all stick together. I'm Christine Lundberg. I'm the mayor of Springfield, Oregon, and I am here because I wanted to see the car, Christine. I'm Christine. I mostly know Mark because he volunteered to have cars at our Christmas parade, well, which I'm is... Well, I'm a celebrity. Because... Okay, start again. I know... <laughs> Thank you for coming out. I want to show you this beautiful car. She's a very jealous girl. I will tell you that. I know. Who's laughing? Why are they doing that? What was that? Christine. It's Christine. Her, she's she's got a male you. voice. Yeah, you're comfortable for now. She gets very mad. As I drive Christine down the road, uh, it's really cool to be able to reflect back and know that we had a really good, productive week. We got our 1970 CUDA back end all buttoned up. I got to spend time with Alyssa and teach her how to do the assembly line markings on the drivetrain for the Hemi Charger. We got the fenders and the doors installed and aligned on our 1970 426 Hemi Charger. We got the drivetrain installed to perfection. And to top it all off, we had an absolute blast visiting with the one and only demon-possessed Christine 1958 Plymouth Fury. Next time on Graveyard Cars, the team struggles to work with aftermarket parts, Alyssa gets her hands dirty, and the ghouls team up to tear down two cars that are worth more than their lives. Coming up next time on Graveyard Cars.